you've got the owner's section where, of course, Branch Rickey is buried in a Dodger grave. Mm -hmm. Walter O'Malley is in a Dodger grave. Uh -huh. Bill Veck is in the White Sox grave. Uh -huh. And Al Finley in the A-hole. <laughs> <laughs> An Oakland A till the end. Wow, all the way. I was a little embarrassed at the burial that Dick Williams went over and started kicking dirt on Ron Luciano. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very good. Well, you know what that is there in the baseball cemetery? What? 60 feet, 6 inches from Don Drysdale's burial mound. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> Don Drysdale's stuff. Oh, man. Uh -huh. Wow. Well, thank you, TC. <laughs> special. Th thank you very much, TC. Yeah. Thanks, Daisy. God, God bless. God bless you. <laughs> oh. Woo! Oh, well. <clears throat> Good morning. <laughs> Hi, that, does that mean it's my turn? I think it is. Well, well no, I, I think we can, we'll, we'll rescue you for just a second here. I, <laughs> I'm fine. I did get this fax. All right. Uh, and over the machine we have here, among many we received. The fax machine? <laughs> that would There's be the a fax machine, machine we have here. <laughs> it's a very unusual machine. Fax. Spits out paper with stuff written on it. I really like Don't it. Don't know where uh -huh. it comes from. Uh, 317. Two five four nine five one one is our fax number. Dear Bob, Tom, Chick, and Christy, it's got everybody on here. I says. Uh, good morning, long time listener, first time fax. <laughs> Recently, you've been talking a great deal about <laughs> the titles of pornographic movies. Uh, yeah. We have. Well, well it's kind sure of an ongoing have. theme. And how, the, and how the, uh, pornographic movies are often are often titled. Yeah. With titles that are plays on words of mm -hmm. actual movies, major actual motion, motion pictures. pictures. It's, a, it's a tradition. Examples: uh, Throbbing Hood, Throbbing yes. Hood, uh, Schindler's Fist, uh -huh. Miracle on Golden Blonde. Yes, Miracle on 69th Street. Uh, Scott, who <laughs> Scott, who has written this letter, says um, this fine production starred Gina Fine uh -huh. mm. and Peter North. Oh, well, Peter. Well, Peter North. He's Peter an icon. North. He is an icon. Yeah. I thought Point you'd want North? to hear about it. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, it does. That's, that's the the movie is called Sex Trek, The Next Penetration. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Oh, sir. <laughs> and with Peter that North. in mind, we go to uh, the sponsor oh, no. of this morning's no news. <laughs> His name is Apollo Johnson. And he's America's number one astronaut. But he's also a well-endowed ladies' man. Monumental Pictures proudly presents Apollo 13 and a half. Oh, Apollo, your rocket is so big. Hang on, baby. It's time for re-entry. Oh. <laughs> Adult film star Dick Mahogany <laughs> in his first starring role since Shaft's Lethal Weapon is... Orbiting the Earth. He's going around the world. <laughs> Being an astronaut must be so exciting. Apollo, do you know what your next mission is? Well, baby, if things go as planned tonight, I'll be visiting Uranus. <laughs> <gasps> Apollo Johnson. He's not just an astronaut. He's a charter member of the 100,000 Mile High Club. And believe me, there's nothing weightless about Apollo 13 and a half. Oh, Apollo. Now I know why they call it the Johnson Space Center. He's Apollo Johnson. And not even the shuttle can hold all of his cargo. Look at that load. Apollo, you must be some kind of super patriot to have a tattoo on your manhood that says USA. No, nah, baby. It don't say USA. When I get excited, it says, us astronauts are committed to the global advancement of all things relative to aeronautics and the exploration of space. The final frontier. Now, on the other side, it says... <laughs> Apollo 13 and a half. Special cameo appearance by Tom Yanks. As astronaut Jim loves it. And co-starring Amelia Clunt. As America's first woman in space, what? Sally Ride Me. Sally, this is Houston. You all right? It sounds like Apollo is running out of oxygen. Don't worry, Houston. Everything's fine. Apollo's just enjoying a little tang, if you know what I mean. Right, sugar? Hey, baby, can you turn up the stereo? <laughs> Apollo Johnson, he's king of the cockpit, and he's got more tail than Halley's Comet. 
Apollo, I've got something to tell you. I'm pregnant. Well, it's been nice knowing you, baby. Uh, Houston, we've got a problem. No, baby, you got a problem. <laughs> Besides, I think you'd make a bad mother. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Apollo 13 and a half. Come see the movie everyone's talking about. From Monumental Pictures. Rated PG-13. <laughs> And a half. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, boy. Good morning. Uh, morning. Wow. It's the uh, <clears throat> largest best selling video right now, I guess, out there. Apollo 13. Is it? I don't know how Apollo 13 is right, yeah. doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, Apollo 13 is uh, quite the keeper. It's a good movie. Right now, it's time for news headlines on the Bob and Tom Show <laughs> with Christy Lee. Which one, Christy? Christy? What? Apollo 13 was a good oh, movie. Okay. Oh. oh you have you seen Apollo 13 and a half? No, I have not seen that one. Mm. Mm. I'm not familiar with Dick Mahogany's work. Is I haven't seen Can any X-rated movies in quite some time. Here's another thing we keep talking about. Can we get Big Dick Black on the show? Oh, I would love to. Have we been trying to do that? I don't think we have. Do we, what's the name of the actor? Williams. Uh, what Williams? Uh, Bill? No. Dick. We started the show this morning with that. It's Can we hear it Dick. again? It's Dick Williams. Isn't no, it? it isn't Dick Williams. Bernie Williams. This no. is from the Bernie movie. Williams. How? How Williams? How Williams? How Williams? <laughs> Hal Williams. Hal Williams. He, he, wasn't he on the TV show? Um, uh, he was Barney in, Miller. No, he oh. was in the movie uh, <laughs> Private Benjamin. Was Private Benjamin, Benjamin, that's right. So he's not a porn actor. He was not no. a Barney no. Miller. No, he's an actor. No. I was kidding. He's dressed at the seat. In Everybody the, else was. He played Harris on Barney Miller. Yeah. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, no, that, that was, was Ron Glass. Glass. That's Ron Glass. No, this is this guy, the movie Hardcore is about <laughs> George C. Scott is a guy trying to find his daughter who's run off and apparently right. is I making actually saw this movie. Porn movies. Great mm -hmm. movie. It's a good it movie. It's a good movie. And uh, there's a scene where he's trying to find her, so he puts a fake ad in the paper so that... Uh, porno actors will come to uh, Audition. auditions so we, so we yes. can because he's looking for a particular right. person because mm -hmm. he's seen this this film Bella. that she's in and, and, and this guy and that is, is he a blonde haired white kid that right. he's in the movie yes. with right. and, so, and as soon as he sees this guy he knows, he knows he's not the I'm, guy because so he's a nice. big black guy right and this is what happens I'm Dick Black <laughs> you're doing a porno movie right <laughs> right Right. Then I'm the man for you. <laughs> I'm the man for I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Black, but I'm afraid you're not exactly the type we're looking for. You mean because I'm black? No. no. Oh, it's not the type. <laughs> what do you mean, not, not the, the type? type. <laughs> man, don't you know who I am? I'm Big Dick Black. I've done more porno movies than you ever saw. I work with Harry Reams, Johnny Wise. Not the type. I can <laughs> ten times a day. Woo. I can wow. keep it hard for two hours at a time. Wow. I'm a woman's dream. I got a <laughs> tongue on me nine inches long. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Black. I'm sure you're very good, but at the moment, I just don't have anything for you. If something comes up, I'll be happy to give you a call. <laughs> you don't want to hire a n***, that's all. I knew. I knew this was a scam. <laughs> this is bull. I knew this was a scam. I love that scene. Uh, that is, uh, there's a supporting actor. Yeah. Oh, How the Academy right overlooked, overlooked him. He was overlooked, overlooked by the Academy. Now, did that movie come out in the theaters, or was it a TV yeah. movie? Oh, no, 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 no. no it was, it was uh, a TV movie. Theatrical release. Oh, yeah. well, it aired on TV, because that's where I saw it. Well, it was like in the 80s. Well, then, then you missed it? all the good parts. Oh, real? Oh, oh Christy. Yeah. Can I take that video home? Sure. Thanks. Okay, very nice. It's uh, laying in the other room. There you go. I'm sorry. Well, that, uh, he really screams and cries. And now, in from, the, from, the from, big, from Big Dick Black, we go to yes. New Hampshire. Oh. With the news. Christy? Well, there are no porno stars running for president. Well, that, not yet. That we know of. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, yeah. and the one guy who financed the movie, <laughs> he's, he's already dropped out. out. He dropped yeah, out. Bill Graham. Graham. Oh, well. The nation's first presidential primary of the 96th campaign is underway in New Hampshire. Drizzles reported in some areas, freezing rain predicted for parts of the northern state. Uh, that's not expected to affect turnout too much, though. In fact, officials say it could be as high as 75%. Some early returns are in, including in Dixville Notch, New Hampshire, where all 25 residents cast their votes at midnight last night, wow, including three painful. absentee votes. With the winner, official Tom Tellison is going to tell us. Pat Buchanan, two votes. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> the winner was Bob Dole. I forgot we, we skipped ahead. <laughs> I just wanted to hear them groan about Bob oh. Dole because I mean Pat Buchanan, Pat Buchanan, cause oh. Pat Buchanan officials were not real happy with the early early turn. Well, it's, it's, well, it's so it's early. hardly a representative sample, right? It's, what is it called, Bone Gnaw or something? Dixville, oh. Dixville Notch, Dixville Notch, Dixville Notch. Yes. You don't have to move there. Here's here's the first announcement. Bob Dole, eleven votes. <laughs> Now, like do you want four, to hear him groan again for like Pat nine, Buchanan? There's like nine people there. Well, yeah, there's only 25 yeah. people in the whole town. Well, see, they're all real. It's, there's like 400 reporters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and 19 voters. Right. Mm -hmm. 100%. 
They got 100 percent. I bet they did. Everybody voted. See, this is like their vote. this is like their Puxatawney. Yeah, yeah, it's the only thing they have. You know, they shove some old guy out of a voting booth, and <laughs> and he, if they see a shadow, they have 12 more weeks of brutal winter. They're way the hell up there. They're practically in Canada. <laughs> Yep, no but now they've been doing it there, uh, what was it now, for uh, 200 years. So. Yeah. 200, 200 years. Long time. 200. Uh, always the first to vote, and uh, this is their 50th opportunity to vote for Bob Dole. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking yeah. of old people, remember I told you about the oldest woman in the world, the lady in France who's now a rap artist? I saw that. Well, it's in the USA Today or... this morning in the lifestyle <clears throat> section. There's a big article on the lady. Um, in fact, her CD, I guess, comes out today in France and in Canada with a USA date maybe to follow. They're not so sure, depending on how it sells. I can't imagine. It'll be very interesting. Yeah. I can't imagine. So either. rap in French? Yeah, well, and then there's an English English version? Oh, mm -hmm. well, that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Word. She's 120. She could word, be. Word. She could be George Burns' mother. Word to your That's mother. That's how old she is. Why? No, how old was she now? She's 120. She's 122 today. I think. Didn't we figure out like when she uh, was? L.A. Say, I have a question. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get my rap song done. <laughs> what rhymes with incontinent? <laughs> no, now think about that. When she was 50, George Burns was like 30. Yeah, she's. she's yeah, old. So enough. George Burns was this young, upcoming TV star when she was 50 years old. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's all. Wow. Mardi Gras coming to an end, but not before today's finale, Fat Tuesday. More than a million partiers expected to jam New Orleans' French Quarter for the last day of revelry before Lent begins. Lent, not Lent. Lent. Oh, it sounded like. I, Lent. I observe Lent every year. I do, too. I I'm love just, hot cross buns. Let's go it's my like favorite this. part. Yeah, yeah but still That's there. Lent with no. an E, isn't it? No. Lent. I was referring to Lent. My Lent. Lent. Once again, I'm doing what I do every year at Lent. What's, What's that? that? Giving up self-denial. a boy. <laughs> You should try to give up something. It'd be good for you. All right. I'll give up... Um... What do you really like, you know Bob? How about cigarettes? Give up alcohol, Bob. That's what I'm doing. You are? Mm-hmm. No alcohol during Lent. Did well, we have wait till you so During Lent? <laughs> yeah, during Lent. Don't you have to give it up for the rest of the time, too? What do no, you mean? just for 40 no, days. No, just for... 40 days and 40 nights. And then you go on a big drunk, or... No, you betcha. I'm not going to go on a big drunk. I'm just going to give up all alcohol for Lent. How long is Lent? 40 four days. weeks. Mm. 40 days and 40 nights, isn't it? You give that up, you might give up something else. You know, just, what? <laughs> just based on the... <laughs> <laughs> what? Tom. What the hell are you talking about? Tom. Tom. What? <laughs> you know, if I could take this time to possibly tell you about my broadcast career. No, that's uh, okay. You make it sound like I'm some kind of drunk or no, something. No, I don't no, drink no, that I, much I, at I, all. I know you barely drink. No, 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 no. No one said that you were... Well, you drink a little. Is what we're trying to say. And Very little. Mm -hmm. But once you get started. Woo! What I was going to say was you might want to, you know, you might find that <laughs> without, you know, a couple of beers, it's a little bit harder to. <laughs> Where's he going with this? I don't know. <laughs> Move on, Christy. Quick, I'm trying to give you an opportunity. Cato Kalin is scheduled to undergo his third and final day of pretrial questioning in Los Angeles in the civil case against O.J. You'll recall he underwent two days of questioning last week. Wednesday, well, the spotlight shifts back to O.J. for the second phase of his deposition, which started back in January. It's closing argument time for Eric and Lyle Menendez. Unlike their first murder trial, which ended in hung juries. Um, this time they're getting the chair. Well, this time the judge. Yeah. has said there is going to be no evidence that these guys were in imminent danger, which means they cannot use the argument that they were fearing for their lives that well, provoked see, them to gun down their parents. They'd already killed their fathers. So their mother's sitting there watching TV, right? And they blow yeah. her brains out. Which I think they probably figured that she was going to uh, Tell on turn them. around, stand up, <laughs> take the Davenport, and start hitting them with it. Yeah. They didn't yeah. have to be there. A heat of passion argument was their defense there. They can't execute those guys quick enough for yeah. true. It's Dr. Way, Jack Kevorkian. Can, can I back up a second? I wasn't listening. What did you say the temperature was in New Hampshire today? Is it a warm day or a cold? No, it's freezing rain there. Oh, so it's real cold? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, because that'll be that'll change everything because that'll get out just the hardcore voters. and Yeah. That would explain. I was watching CNN earlier this morning, and I, I noticed that the Buchanan people were wearing their flannel sheets <laughs> and uh, <laughs> more heavy-duty. Yes. Kind of. I oh. like him. I think that would be a uh, good race, Buchanan and Clinton. That'd, that'd be kind of colorful. Yeah, and that'd be, no, that'd be a great be, race. It would be a I think landslide. Be, I think yeah. Be yeah. yeah. I, I bet one. Bill wants to have Buchanan got, to win, too. I got one word for you. Goldwater. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine Dole Old doing Barry. it. I can, Dole's not going to do it. No matter better. who runs against Clinton right now, you it's going to be a landslide. Watch for Lamar Alexander to come from the outside turn. Who is this guy? 
he's, he's, he's out there. He's happening. He's bubbling under. Never uh, even um, heard now, of Both it Bob Dole and Pat Buchanan are predicting victory today. Um, Already? Yeah, although only Pat Buchanan is uh, predicting Aryan supremacy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I see. There. What has Pat Buchanan ever done to you? <laughs> My favorite line still was uh, last week on uh, this week with David Brinkley, where one of the guys said, "All these reporters sitting around, Sam Donaldson, and everybody in there, saying we all know, referring to themselves, we all know all these candidates personally, and uh, the one we'd all invite over to dinner first would be Pat Buchanan, because he said he's the nicest. Mm. Is that right? Nicest and the funniest. Well, he seems like that's what I. And he's also an, he's an old media guy like they are. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, he's been know. in this building. That's right. He is. Yeah. In fact, yeah, I remember that because when he came down the stairs, the Secret <laughs> Service guy sat me back down in my car. That's right. Wow. Yeah, they were all over the parking lot. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there was the time Chick and I tried to go see uh, then-President Bush speak. And... Yeah. Oh, weren't you a little out of line, Chick? Well, you know, first of all, the FBI knows I'm not a homosexual. <laughs> so, but then, yeah, the place was crawling with Secret Service people. Remember that? Yeah, we couldn't get near it. Yeah, we couldn't go anywhere. All we wanted to do That's what their job is. I seem to have some sort of record or something. Those guys have no sense of humor. No, they don't. They don't take anything. Well, I don't, I don't blame them. I wouldn't either. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't get near them. I'm sorry. Opening statements are set for today in the assisted suicide trial of Dr. Jack Kevorkian. and he's accused of assisting in two suicides in 1993. He was charged under Michigan's now expired ban on assisted suicide. So both his patients and the ban have now expired. <sighs> exactly. The countdown starts this afternoon for what could be an electrifying space shuttle mission. Columbia will launch Thursday afternoon from Florida's Kennedy Space Center if everything goes well. NASA and the Italian Space Agency have spent $442 million on the main experiment. What, what, what are they going to do? I tell you. They're going <laughs> to... The astronauts are going to slowly unreal a small... <laughs> Suddenly, Christy is... She's doing become... stand-up over there. She's in the cat skill. It's 1954. What are they going to do? Her name is now Lenny. <laughs> you know, I've heard a lot of newscasters say, and, and you know, they make a mistake, uh, rather, or repeating, or, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I like that. That's, uh, that's friendly. Astronauts are going to slowly unreal a small Italian satellite from the payload bay on a thin wire about 12 miles long. The idea here is to generate electricity as the wire passes through Earth's ionosphere. The power could be used for any number of applications aboard the shuttle. The first attempt at this in 92 failed when the wire snagged while being reeled out. See, but the engineers snag. believe they've solved the glitch. Well, you know, the Italian engineers used all of that uh, great uh, training they had during World War II. Oh, really? They can make virtually anything retreat. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it out there and... Uh -huh. I wonder if they have Ooh. Italian tires on that shuttle. <laughs> what do you think? Little Pirellis? Hmm? Well. Hmm? Big Italian, Pirelli. Italian tires. Uh, morning. Mm -hmm. Bob and Tom show. <laughs> Hello? Hello. Uh, this is uh, Agent Thompson from the FBI. Oh, oh good yeah. morning, sir. Uh, I was just going to uh, make a statement. Uh, <clears throat> our uh, public relations person wanted us to call and uh, let you in on some information. All right. Uh, we at the FBI have no conclusive evidence that Chick McGee is not homosexual. That's <laughs> <laughs> not the way I... We had uh, what? some misinformation out there. It's not the way I heard that. I... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Really? At this time, we don't want to release any further statement, but just say that we don't know one way or the other. Well, thank you, Agent. You, uh, have, a, uh, you have a very nice voice. Why, well, thank you. <clears throat> You'll be investigated. <laughs> <laughs> The Russian space station Mir marks 10 years in orbit today. It was February 20th, 1986, when a Soviet rocket carrying the first module for Mir blasted off. Moscow plans to keep Mir in orbit into the next century. Two nephews of John F. Kennedy are back in the U.S. after meeting with a man their uncle desperately tried to topple, Fidel Castro. Robert Kennedy Jr. and Michael Kennedy, sons of former Attorney General Robert Kennedy, met with the Cuban leader while touring the island with a group of U.S. conservationists. They say Castro has softened his position about completing a nuclear power plant in Cuba. Some environmentalists feel the plant is being built shoddily, and they worry that a problem at the plant could threaten the United States. Yeah, that'd be a problem. Yes, that would be a problem. But Castro didn't know they were Kennedys. Yes, he did. <laughs> so, uh, Ken Worth. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Good nice trucks. <laughs> nice to see you. They, well, they have a lot in common. Kensington. Kennedys and the uh, Castros. Kennedys and the Castros? Oh, yeah, they're both in that Will Chamberlain strange league. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt. In the 20,000. See, that's the best place. Of, that's the best thing about owning your own, or running your own country. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, hot well, and sure. cold running. The yeah. Oh, Castro's, yeah. Castro's wife, was, I guess, kind of disappeared a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I don't know where she is now, but it's apparently he's apparently like a monster with the he's old still, clothes. He's still wearing the fatigues, though. He bought a suit. He bought a suit. He, he did. A suit. He I wore a suit when he was suit. in that when he went to that conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the occasional suit? Yeah. A brick wall riddled with bullets in a turf battle between gangster Al Capone and his chief rival is for sale for more than two hundred thousand dollars. An unidentified private collector is offering to sell the wall of a Chicago garage that was headquarters for the Bugs Moran gang in the nineteen twenties. That's a little steep. Yeah, if they yeah. saw the wall, won't the building fall down? I just... <laughs> we don't need it. No. Uh, Finally, this morning. I can tell you one guy who won't buy it. Who's that? Geraldo. <laughs> yeah, Geraldo will have nothing Not to do Not after that bad thing. Yeah, good point. Pat Boone, the clean cut crooner, wants to cut an album featuring songs of ACDC, Metallica, Megadeth, Guns N' Roses, and Van Halen. I'd listen to that. Boone says it started as a joke, but then I started thinking maybe there's something to this. No, no, Pat, it's still a joke. Boone says he'd even like Slash from Guns N' Roses and Eddie Van Halen to play on the album with him. You know why? Why? Because it would probably sell. That's why. Everything else he's done. Well, you'd better jump. Uh, <laughs> jump. Yeah. Well, you, you know how he, how he grooves. I mean, he was... The girl's got rhythm. Uh, yeah. When he, uh, he remade Tutti Frutti, did he not? Yes, he did. Oh. Yes. And it was one of the... Uh, well, little Richard, little Richard to this day will not speak oh. of Pat Boone because of that, because he had it out first. It's and, the and, most embarrassing thing I've ever seen. And at seen. the time, so-called white America would not buy little Richard's oh. record. Oh. Mm. That's why Pat Boone did it. He was horrible. Mm. He Fruity, is horrible. Fruity. I'm on the highway to hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. You would buy that album? Thunderstruck. <laughs> sure, I'd buy that. I think that'd be funny. What's that, who what's else that is big balls do? or whatever? Sweet, <laughs> sweet child of mine. <laughs> sure. That yeah, one. yeah, yeah. Can you Knocking do that? Knocking on heaven's door. War, war. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody can this see that. This is a bit. <laughs> this is a... Well, who, what other artists? ACDC and who else? Uh, Motorhead, Metallica, Guns N' Roses. Van Nothing Van else matters. <laughs> Megadeth. Oh, man. I'll pass. Me too. Yeah. Well. Jeez. All right. Thanks, Christy. Good sure. luck, Pat. We're going to take a short break and come back with uh, sports and stuff. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Hi there, 837 at Q95. You're with Bob and Tom. Good morning. Congratulations. We had another winner for our Florida trip. Yeah, um, we did. It's uh, Carol Feldhouse is going with us. Okay, and uh, if you... um. Want to? I would suggest you listen this afternoon. Jimmy Mad Dog made us. will be doing another drawing for our Bob and Tom Village Pantry trip down to Florida. We'll be down at Disney World. We're doing another drawing, of course, uh, every other morning this week and every other every afternoon. Uh, every morning. Excuse me. What are you this, doing? Excuse me. This is the Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> He's We're taking back. Taking his shoes off for some reason. Uh, Chick is having some kind of problem. We'll move on right now with uh, it's sports news time. from the no, world of sports. What are you writing on your shoe? I'm not writing. I'm cleaning. He's cleaning his shoes. We're going to be speaking with actor Mark <laughs> Hamill. Yeah, we were having the Star Wars debate. Uh, off act air. Actor Mark Hamill will be our guest in about 20 minutes. If you have any questions you'd like us to ask him, by all means, fax them to us. We'll ask them for you. Our fax number, area code 317 254 9511. Sports this morning, sponsored in the Bob and Tom Show. Oh, it is. I, mean, I am so hungry. Oh, uh, you want to go get some breakfast, Tom? I guess. Is there a place we can go that has uh, flat-chested waitresses and really baggy clothing? Mm, I don't think so. Think again, Dean. <laughs> Guys, if you've been longing to have breakfast surrounded by flat-chested women in baggy clothing, then you'll want to visit the all-new breakfast restaurant, Pancake Hooters. At Pancake Hooters, you won't be bothered by waitresses who accidentally dip their large bosoms into your maple syrup or who break the yolk of your egg while bending over the table to pour your coffee. Pancake Hooters only hires women with prepubescent builds, so you won't be distracted by massive memories while trying to finish off your breakfast in time to get to work. Wow, what a great breakfast. Uh, sure was, Tom. And I was able to eat my waffle while it was still warm because I wasn't busy staring at gargantuan tatas. <laughs> and you didn't slobber in your coffee either. <laughs> and guys, if you're in a real hurry, be sure and take advantage of our flat as a smorgasbord breakfast buffet. Why not try Pancake Hooters today? You'll see why our hardline policy with our waitress staff is it's either 32A or the highway. Pancake <laughs> <laughs> <Hey>, Hooters! <laughs> There you go. Like Flapjack. You'll never catch me there. Oh, well. I'm sorry. I want them break. Do you think there's anyone who hasn't seen all the Star Wars movies? Mm. Oh, sure. There's probably uh, a few. So if I said that Darth Vader's Luke's father, that would probably... Ouch. 
throw some things out. Oh, of no, there. actually not, because I'll never forget when that movie came out, The uh, whichever fast food chain was doing the tie-in. Yes. I will never forget. The, the movie we had was not even in the stores yet, and the commercial was on the air. Mm -hmm. I am your father. Don't forget, you get the glass, where you get to hear Darth Vader go, Look, I am your father. <laughs> okay. They there also goes did that with uh, Star Trek. Wasn't that in the Trek. third one? They did that with Star Trek. Oh, Spock lives. Yes. Spock lives. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Just true. in case you hadn't heard. Yeah. Did yeah. Darth reveal he was his dad in the second or third one? Second. Second one. Yeah. Second one. Yeah. The only one worth seeing is the first one. <clears throat> no, nah, the second one. First second one, okay. The third, third one. one. <laughs> the second two are, the second two are, the second two are, the second two are <laughs> puppet favorite. shows. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's true. First Yoda. Ones, first Yoda. Ones, right? We'll be talking with the star of Star Wars um, and... Um, the star of Wing Commander, a uh, CD-ROM game, Mark Hamill, in about 15 minutes. He 15 was on something minutes. else, too, when he was a kid on, like, Saturday morning. He yes, was, he was. I remember, uh, he too. He was on... Uh, Before the Star Wars thing. Room yeah. 222. He was? He is was? Is that right? He was He's not that old, no. is he? Yeah, he was a guest, and he was on Partridge Family and Streets of San Francisco. He was a tel television Streets of San Francisco actor. is what I'm remembering it from. Oh. Hmm. All right. um, I believe he played. Do you think he was class. labeled for life then after the Star Wars pictures? I'm thinking. I'm thinking game? when you're in one of the most seen most in pictures yeah. in history, probably. Yeah. He. Uh, Especially oh, when you do three of them. Yeah. Although obviously Harrison Ford has gone on to do a lot of other. Yes, movies. he has. But he didn't have the major role. Either. Mark Hamill played the Elephant Man. He did. Oh, yeah. On Broadway in back in 1981, kind oh, of a departure. That didn't is. Know that. What he did was he took the uh, he went to uh, a restaurant and got one of those uh, taco salads. Mm-hmm. Threw out the lettuce and just put that taco thing in his face. You look just like the oh, old man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Where did that come from? Have you, ever eaten, uh, have you ever eaten lunch with Tom? If you order the taco <laughs> salad, you get that litany every day. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot eat that. It looks like the elephant man. <laughs> I don't know why you keep getting that. The I can't even stand man. to look at it. Turn it. Put it on the back of the table. Oh, <laughs> I am not your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that elephant man. He's Every time. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never once thought of a taco salad and the elephant man in the same thought. Yeah, no, Next time you see lied. the movie, look at his face. Take your taco salad, put a little burlap sack over it, and go, foop. And there you got the elephant man. <laughs> kind wow. of brains over there, huh? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's talk sports. We'll talk with uh, Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill, in about 15 minutes, okay? Luke. Good morning, sports fans. Bob, Tom. Christy. Chick. 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 Number third, Yukon. What are you giving up for Lent? Me? Masturbation. I can't. Right. I cannot do that. All right. By the way, that angle has seemed to have caught the imagination of uh, <laughs> local some folks that I've met uh, run into lately. I, mm. I was at a... Uh, was asking at, you about the practice now? I was at a pet store on Saturday, actually. Where well, you met Gene? It was... Uh, it was uh, no, I was a picture of your pet with Chick or whatever. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanted me to have my picture taken with their pet. I but anyway, this guy comes up to me. That's funny because when Bob and I did it, we did hundreds of dogs. I know. I yeah, we did. Uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, no one, not a single person. <laughs> no. uh, but anyway, you had to pay to do it with us too. Like, this guy, <laughs> charity, but this guy not comes a up. single person wanted to. Would you leave him alone? That's sad. So this guy comes up. Do you have a ferret? <laughs> <laughs> no. All he said was, you "Ever do it in a pet store?" <laughs> <laughs> And your reply? And I said, uh, no, no, I haven't. <laughs> now, Chick, would you like to? Uh, and then Friday night, that was what you announced uh, in the pet store. Oh, if your dog vomits, you get a free license plate. <laughs> <laughs> and some guy was dragging it. <laughs> uh, if your dog's the first dog to throw up on the carpet, you win a free license plate. <laughs> so this guy <laughs> dragging his dog right in the choker chain. Uh, I said, I'm kidding. Yeah. My hand on the license oh, plate. Believe it? No. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was not I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, Yukon. Yeah, they Happy. lose last night. Uh, no. Hoya, they suffered Hoya paranoia. Uh, in Landover, 11th rank, Georgetown stunned Connecticut. 77-65. Uh, when's my chair going to be ready, Kavoyan? I'm working on it. 77-65. Uh, the Hoyas snapped the Huskies' 23-game winning streak. Allen Iverson, great NBA name, too. May have gotten a few more votes for player of the year. Uh, had uh, 26 for Georgetown and 8 steals. The Hoya defense smothered UConn. No, I mean, actually smothered them. Uh, holding guard Ray Allen to 13 points of 5 of 18 from the floor. Hold him they him. hold him down, they hold him down, <laughs> and they put him. I will hold him down and pet him and stroke <laughs> him. And him. He's a little, tiny little. And they smothered him. <laughs> <laughs> number five, Kansas. I like Ray Allen. Nebraska, 81-71. Number six, uh, Cincinnati Bearcats beat St. Louis, 69-64. And number 25, Wisconsin Green Bay beat uh, Wisconsin-Milwaukee, 81-66. Charles Barkley is on the list of NBA greats who have accomplished the 2010 20,000 points and 10,000 rebounds. It's Sir his Charles. birthday today. Is it his birthday? Yeah, he's 33 today. Look at him. 
Sir Charles. Sir Charles waxed the glass for his 10,000th board last night at America West Arena as the Suns topped the Vancouver Grizzlies in overtime, 98-94. But sadly, of course, the record doesn't count. It comes against an expansion team. <laughs> Barkley, who reached the 20,000-point plateau 12 days ago, joins an impressive list of players, uh, including Chamberlain, Jabbar, Moses Malone, Elvin Hayes, Elgin Baylor, Rod Robert Parrish, Walt Bellamy, Bob Pettit. Hakeem Olajuwon. Barkley, 17 points, 14 rebounds last night in the win for the Suns. Seattle bounced Atlanta, 102-94. The Sonics won, win their seventh straight, 23-2 and in their new home, the Key Arena. Sean Kemp scored 21 to lead Seattle. Detlef, had, uh, Detlef Schrempf had 20. And President's Day, not kind to the Bullets. Sean Bradley had a season high 27. The Nets pound the Washington Bullets, 99-81. Nets are enjoying a season-best four-game winning streak. Mm -hmm. Cleveland beat Miami 73-70 in an offensive, dazzling display of... Well, actually, it wasn't. Detroit beat Minnesota 113-83. Golden State 112, Dallas 100. And Houston beat Sacramento in overtime 118-111. He was colorful, yet... You're not trying this again, are you? Jesus. He was colorful, yet controversial... Could you turn that down? Thank you. Sorry. Technical problem. <laughs> Colorful, controversial, some would say bastard, but Charles Finley, Dead. the former Oakland A's owner. Do you think that's what it says on his tombstone? Colorful? Well, I don't know if I'm going to be honest. Friendly? Bastard. Bastard. Three World Series championships in the 70s uh, died yesterday. He bought the Kansas City Athletics in 1960. You know what it says on his tombstone? What? <laughs> no dancing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no dancing, no <laughs> urinating. <laughs> Was it that bad for oh, Charlie? Oh, yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. <laughs> Finley will also be remembered for his many innovations in the game. Some have lasted, like night World Series games in the designated hitter. Others never caught on, like wearing funny hats in the outfield. And <laughs> <laughs> the clown shoes never And right-handed pitchers having to pitch left in the fourth inning. Yeah. Very funny. But <laughs> others, uh, also the orange baseballs, never caught on either. I like that idea, though. And attempts to speed Makes up the game to see the ball. with three balls for a walk instead of four. You remember that. Sure. It's because Charlie only had three balls. No, that'd be one too many. Well, that, that was <laughs> yeah. the elephant. He had Hitler's extra. The elephant had three balls. You pitch him, or they walk him, pitch walk, the walk giraffe. Him pitch the rhino. There'll be a wine and cheese party later this afternoon in suburban uh, Oakland for former A's players. I see. Major League Baseball still looking for ways to shorten games. A spokesman for the ruling executive council says umpires might be asked to call strikes at the knees this season instead of standing in their normal positions. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, games were... <laughs> This way. They all look like Wouldn't the catcher get in the way? Oh, that midget umpire. What's all that? Well, he's Wouldn't, on his knees. Right. Wouldn't the catcher get in the way? Yes. Be a little hard to see. Well, last year's games were shortened by an average of three minutes. That's 180 seconds. Wow. What did they do? To, what were the rule changes last year? They, uh, you couldn't leave the box or... And that was it? Yeah, I think that was it. And, there, and the pitchers had so many seconds between pitches. Shorten the game by, what, three minutes them, or something? Three or? minutes, wow. Yeah. Them speed up. I'm telling you, that'll shave. Get you, that'll get you home in time. Yeah, right? boy. Yeah, shave time off that national anthem. Oh, there you go. Uh, Deion Sanders. Uh, oh, say, I'm the home of the brave. <laughs> no, it's, oh, say, can you see the home of the brave. There you go. See, then you're done. Yeah. Oh. Deion Sanders will have a news conference later today to announce that he's just going to play football, no baseball this season. Oakland Raiders will call an afternoon news conference at which it's expected they'll announce the signing of free agent cornerback Larry Brown. He, the MVP of Super Bowl XXX, uh, had two interceptions for the Cowboys in their 27-17 win over Pittsburgh. National Hockey League, Philly beat New Jersey 4-1, Tampa Bay 4, Dallas 2, Detroit beat Vancouver 4-3, Colorado 7, Edmonton 5, and Boston and Los Angeles tie at 3 in overtime. And that's Sports! sports. <laughs> oh, we got this one here. Yeah, do the other one. Uh, good morning, ma'am. <laughs> and isn't it a lovely morning? Up yours. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you go, whatever you do, always be a good sport. Uh, okay. Yesterday we talked a lot about washing our hands and germs, okay? Did you guys wash your hands? No, I just washed mine this morning. Actually. Well, yeah. talks on Madagascar's political crisis canceled when opposition leaders refused to wash their hands before meeting President Albert Zaffi on Monday. Really? Mm-hmm. Who's the opposition party? The fast food workers? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. We uh, Albert Zaffy, wasn't he in Ben Casey? <laughs> <laughs> that was Sam, Sam Jaffe. Jaffe. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and we have one more story this morning and more for you on George Washington, the Riverside Farm where Washington romped as a boy and where legend has it the first American president chopped down his father's cherry tree could soon be part of a less quaint American legend. 
Walmart. <laughs> they plan a new wow. store atop part of the old Washington wow. form, <laughs> form. They plan a new store atop part of the old Washington farm. This is George Washington's boyhood home, and it's a national treasure, said Sessie Howell, one leader of a citizen's opposition group. There can always be more shopping centers, but there can never be another place like this one. Of course not. No. You know, if it does become a Walmart, yeah. mm -hmm. I was thinking, you mentioned this yesterday. Yes, we did. I imagine they, they, you, they're apparently, they, Walmart said they're going to try to give it like a colonial theme. Uh-huh, colonial facade, yes. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine you're like walking around in there and you, you can go up to a clerk and say, excuse me, I had a question about this. And the clerk would say, I cannot tell a lie. I don't work in this department. <laughs> <laughs> and then walk on. Wow. Because <laughs> so, I went into a Walmart yesterday, and as soon as you walk in... There's oh, usually a greeter. Sure, hi. Uh -huh. yeah, I think it was, a greeter. it was Washington's Secretary of State. You think? I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was really old. By the way, if I can't show you where your department is, can I ask you to uh -huh. plug in my defibrillator? <laughs> Could you help me push this cart to you? <laughs> now, do you think that uh, you think they'll have them where the greeters wear powdered wigs and stuff like I that? I think, no, I think that this is... Oh, a, that would be good. This is turning into a huge public relations disaster. disaster. Yeah. You know, they've yeah. said if they don't let them build it there, it's... Somebody else will. It's off to Monticello. <laughs> <laughs> who, who owns the, who owns the land? Mount Vernon next. The federal government can't annex this land for some historical... Uh, you would think they could step in. You know, I mean, as a taxpayer... They can do I, anything else. I'd go on record. I'd rather mm -hmm. do that than buy some of the crap that they're out there buying. Well... Good Sorry, point. George. We're going to take a break. Coming up in a few minutes, we'll be speaking with actor Mark Hamill, famous right. for his work in the Star Wars trilogy. We'll be right back. This is The Bob and Tom Show. Singing sensation. Shortly. Uh, why are you waving at me? <laughs> Just say, say hi. hi. Uh, dense fog out there. <laughs> Some big traffic problems right now. I-70 westbound before the north split. The left lane is closed. Once again, I-70 westbound before the north split. Ooh, that's always a problem. The there. left lane is closed right now. Uh, by the way, um, our friend Duke Tomato is going to be at the Slippery Noodle tonight. So look for Duke tonight at the Slippery Noodle. Fat Tuesday. Rockin'. This is the Bob and Tom Show. And we're not sure how far away we are from speaking via satellite minutes. with um, Mark Hamill actor from the, uh, he's going to be talking about his new CD-ROM. Luke, I am your father. Wing Commander. But while we're waiting, we're going to hear a, a little song. All right. Um, it's a love song from Bernie Lovers on the Bob and Tom Show. I took you to the airport today. Said you'd be back two weeks from today. I came home, I was so lonely and sad. And that's why I'm screwing your sister. <laughs> that's why I'm screwing your sister. She's got the same laugh. <laughs> She's got the same nose. Like you, she likes to suck on my toes. Seems so funny, I don't miss you as much. Now that I've been screwing your sister. Picked you up from your gate today. But you were acting in such a strange way. It was then you put together the pieces. The fun I had with your nieces <laughs> They've got the same eyes They've got that same face Like you, they like to wear that black lace <laughs> Seems so funny, I don't miss you as much How I love your nieces to pieces <laughs> Started posing those questions to me <laughs> But I didn't want to hurt you, you see <laughs> It was then that you were to uncover the orgy we had at your brother's. <laughs> I screwed your cousin Sue. I mounted Aunt Jean. <laughs> Boy, I really made your grandmother scream. <laughs> Seems so funny we don't miss you as much now that I've been screwing your family. <laughs> That's all good. There you go. 8.57, you're with Bob and Tom. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. And um, I believe we're all set to talk with uh, Mark Hamill on the satellite. I here. think so. Mark? Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing okay. How are you guys doing? Very good. Uh, great. Um, we're all hooked in here via satellite. And uh, Mark, uh, can I start by asking about the Joker? Absolutely. Uh, tell us about uh, the, your history as, as a voice man. <laughs> Well, that's the very first thing I did. I didn't intend to uh, go in for a voice job. I have a writing partner. Uh, we've actually written a comic book that's coming out this summer, but we went in to get a writing assignment on the animated Batman. There were 65 episodes that were to be made, and the the source that they were go uh, modeling the, the series after were the old Fleischer Superman cartoons. I'm a real animation buff, and I do know the Batman canon fairly well, but... 
uh, I eventually wound up auditioning and getting the part of the Joker, which, I mean, if I would known uh, then what I know now, I probably would have been very intimidated. But uh, la-di-da, I didn't think I was going to get the part anyway, and mm -hmm. uh, look what happened. I've since gone on to do... I'm typed, by the way, guys. I'm typed as a villain in cartoons. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, they do have the, some of the... The most hammy dialogue, but uh, um, I'm Hobgoblin on Spider-Man, and I'm Dr. Jack on The Phantom, and I'm uh, Maximus on Fantastic Four. I mean, you know, you, uh, do you, I you guess... Have, do you have to sorry? work a lot? To, do you have to work a lot to change your voice around for each one of these characters? Uh, well, yeah. I, that's one thing that's very interesting to me about the whole uh, animation uh, business is it's very much like radio acting. They're not so much interested in how you look physically. I, I've done auditions where... They close their eyes or, or turn their backs just so that they can uh, disconnect the way you look from the way you sound. And I know when I did Joker, uh, you know, I called my mom. She lives in Austin, Texas. And I said, Mom, you know, on Thursday, I gave her the date and the time. She called me when it was over. And she said, Honey, <laughs> did, you, did you get fired? I said, No, I didn't. That, that's me. She, well, I never heard you do that voice around the house. I just wanted to make sure. I wanted to make sure it was you. I did. I wanted to make sure it was you because you know Batman does cut into Oprah. <laughs> nice. So you know, mo moms are pretty much the same everywhere. Now, my question is: Has your mom ever heard you do that voice of your mom? <laughs> well, I'll be hearing about it. I'm sure. Uh -huh. Well, well, little Mister Hamill, yeah. I heard you. I heard you doing your mommy. It didn't sound very nice. You made right. me sound like. That's my son's favorite show. He loves the animated yeah. Batman, so I wanted to bring mm, that up. Excellent. We're speaking with actor Mark Hamill, and um, Mark, can you uh, tell us a little bit about the CD-ROM game that you've got going? Wing Commander. Uh, listen, I sort of fell into the CD-ROM thing. You know, I went and met Chris Roberts, and they I had done an interactive before, but just voiceover. Me and Tim Curry play partners in a, in a, detec a detective story. And I don't think I even realized what I was getting into because, I, you know, it's like when I did Off-Broadway, I thought, well, you know, it's like niche performing. Nobody's going to really know I did this. And lo and behold, it goes on to be one of the more successful projects I've ever done just in terms of sheer numbers. I mean, it's, it, they've sold upwards of a million units of this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's enormous. And what it is, it's, a, it's, it's filmed like a movie, but the player controls my character, and you can affect the outcome depending on the decisions you make. It branches off, and, and, and we filmed every variation depending on... I mean, it's like a variation of, of when you were in, in school and you read the books that said if you want the detective to go to the attic, turn to page 57. Right. So the, the script is thicker than a phone book. It, it can be maddening when you try and uh, I mean, actors are basically trained to have a beginning, a middle, and an end in a linear storyline. Uh, but it's, it's so engrossing. I mean, it so involves you. You become uh, a screenwriter. If you're, the, if you're the player, you can be the screenwriter, the director. You can almost become a cast member because you, you can hear my thought processes. You, you, you move the joystick depending on how, how you want me to behave. It's, uh, it's been a, a, a thrill to do because it's it, obviously it's like, uh, I don't know, it's, it, it's unlike anything else I've ever done. And have you played the game yourself on a number of occasions? It, well, not on a number of occasions. I've played, but it's, it's, it's the skill level is, uh, uh, I mean, I think you really have to get into it and really get, in other words, I'm trying to say that I'm not that good at it. <laughs> <laughs> my, my son said to me, Dad, whatever you do, don't ever play this in front of people. Because uh, <laughs> in the actual movie, Colonel Blair is an expert pilot and uh, knows exactly what he's doing. But And, you know, I, I, the, the reaction I get from people, I'm trying to figure out what age is it that this appeals to. Because in airports, in malls, supermarkets where the public comes up to me, you know, you get anyone from real, the real small fry, you know, first, third, first, second, third grade, all the way, you know, I get a lot of mail from people overseas, guys in the mil military, and they want to know specific questions, technical questions uh, that uh, I'm not uh, completely sure of, but uh, <laughs> you're, you look a little different than people that are familiar with you from uh, your first great success, the, the Star Wars trilogy. Uh, you look a little... Um Older. Different in this. Older. <laughs> did you did you deliberately try to make yourself have a kind of a, a more uh, I don't know rough look? Yes, yes. That was one of the things. I mean, the Colonel Blair is the veteran of this twenty year war, so he's a little bit more grizzled, a little bit more hard edged. Um, 
Uh, yeah, definitely. I think you try and find some physical difference in every part you play. It's just uh, it, it's it's something you use as an actor. And you know, there's a great cast. You, you're talking about Malcolm McDowell. Uh, Tom Wilson, who's the bully in the Back to the Future movies, a mm -hmm. hilarious guy, right. uh, plays Maniac. Um, you know the uh, Tia Carrera in that also, or is that a different one? Um, I'm sorry, I missed that last bit. Is it Tia Carrera? Is she in that? No, Tia Carrera. No, no, no. I think you're getting us to this. Is Wing Commander Four. So oh, okay. Uh, uh, Wing Commander 4 is my second. I did Wing Commander 3. That's the one that's had the gigantic success. I mean, that really surprised me. Mm -hmm. And, and um, uh, Wing Commander 4 just came out, so we, the numbers aren't back on it yet. But I have to tell you, uh, I said to them, I don't want to do a rehash of Wing Commander 3. We basically fight a war with this alien race. And there's so, you know, you could play it, in theory, you could play it for years and never have the same scenario twice. There's win scenar uh, winning scenarios, losing scenarios, uh, I've seen draw. That. Yeah, so I mean, uh, <laughs> you've uh, seen the losing all scenarios. The losing about... scenarios huh? <laughs> yeah. Listen, we filmed my execution for the losing scenario. I've seen. So <laughs> you've seen that. <laughs> You're not very good at the game, are you, I Bob? Suck. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Good. <laughs> so we're well, speaking... I, when I filmed that, I thought, well, no sequels for this guy. <laughs> but you know, uh, you know, when I read Wing Commander, the script for Wing Commander Four, I was astonished because it's much more cerebral a game yes there are there are space combat sequences but it's 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 the war is over some faction is trying to tri trigger skirmishes to re-trigger the war i mean it's much more espionage and breaking into facilities and stealing plans and i think these guys uh de palma and and boris the screenwriters really outdid themselves i mean it really stands on its own we're speaking with actor Mark Hamill. Mark, you mentioned uh, the word sequel. I'm sure that you, everyone asked you this. We had several people fax us this question when we indicated right. that we are going to be speaking to you. Are you going to be involved in the, uh, I guess it's a prequel or whatever they're going to be doing with the Star Wars series? Are you going to have any uh, role in that, do you know? I'll be in the audience. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, no, the, the the thing is, it does. It goes back thirty years. It's like, uh, I'm too old for the part. You can't now. play your you can't play your grandfather or something. Or your, <laughs> right, your, right. Your, your uncle. Too, too hokey. <laughs> uh, Mark Hamill is our guest, and uh, he's involved in a a new CD ROM game. Do you know if this is available in uh, Mac format? Uh, I yes, it, it is. It's it's the new one already. It yeah. is yes. Well, yes. Wing Three is, and this eventually will be. But listen, mm -hmm. let me tell you something. I want the people listening with their buy a computer store go in and play it for four minutes. Okay, just try it for four minutes. You'll definitely be hooked. This thing draws you in, unlike almost any other production I've been in, because mm -hmm. you are you can't just sit and watch this thing go by. You've got to become actively involved, and I mean it sells itself if you play it once. I, I hear him getting excited. He's <clears throat> slipping into the Joker a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit, yeah. Uh, we, we're... It's a wonderful game. Go out and buy it. <laughs> Mark Hamill, the Joker. Uh, when you get to do the voices for cartoons, is it just you in the studio or, or any of the other actors around when you do them? Uh, well, let's see. What happened with the Joker was I replaced another actor, so there were six episodes done, and I dubbed them just like you would a foreign film or or looping, or they call it. But uh, then uh, the rest of them, because I've done something like I don't know, twenty five, twenty six uh, Batman's. For the most part, yes, the whole cast is in a studio, and you record it like you would a radio play, and they animate the drawings later. Right. So they do the, they do the voices oh, first. Voices first. It's easier, voices easier first. To right. Now, do you have someone that helps you, or coaches you when you're when you're trying to create a cartoon voice? Do they say try this, try that with your mouth? Or well, your... not really, and that's a tough thing because you from like you're lucky if you even get a drawing. Usually, you get two pages of dialogue, and you haven't read the whole script. You really, I think it's really like shooting fish in a barrel in a way. I mean, it's it's tough. And no, they they don't tell you. You either. You do it, and they either like it or they don't. And I mean, a lot of times, you find out later the voice they went with, and you thought, "Gee, you know, I never thought of that." I mean, I mean, I could have tried it if someone had told me. Mm -hmm. But um, um, do they ever say after you finished a segment, they go, "That was great," except it didn't sound like the Joker or 
Did you do it again? Uh, there, yeah. Back in the character. Do you have trouble staying in yeah, the character? Yeah, yeah. And then also early on with the Joker, they were worried that, uh, you know, they got some bad reaction because it was scaring little kids. And I think it's pretty tame for, it is television, but, uh, you know, J Joker's all uh, bark and no bite. You know, I threatened to kill everyone in sight and never lay a finger on anybody. <laughs> right. Okay. We had to do a movie for me to be able to kill someone. <laughs> uh, we're speaking, Mask of the Phantasm. Uh, we're speaking with Mark Hamill. I know, Mark, you got a bunch of interviews to do today, and we certainly appreciate your time. So we will My pleasure. we will let you go, and I'll remind everybody that um, uh, Mark is now available on CD-ROM. Yes. Wing Commander, uh, Wing Commander 4. 4. Okay, thanks a lot, Mark. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Uh -huh, Mark bye -bye. Hamill uh, from the uh, Wing Commander 4. So you've played Wing Commander 3 rather unsuccessfully? 3, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not done. Unsuccessfully, yes. I They're see. a little too complicated for me. Give me Pac-Man. That's what I want. You know, I, I'm kind of, <laughs> it's funny, I, I'm kind of intrigued with voices and everything, and the first time I saw the Batman thing... I, w I wondered who did the Joker, so I recorded an episode and and paused on the voice credits, and it said Mark Hamill, and I went, "Nah, it can't be the same Mark Hamill." That, but it, it, it is. he really does a great job on that. On that, indeed, on this voice, it is because I never thought anybody would replace, you know, Cesar Romero and that laugh and everything, but it, or Jack Nicholson, <laughs> or Jack Nicholson. Well, yeah, Jack was point. Jack. Was Jack was still <laughs> Jack doing the Joker. Mm -hmm. So, but mm. we're gonna take a break. Uh, <clears throat> we have to uh, take a short break right now. We'll come right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Now, an interactive radio experience. Dean at Q95. You're with Bob and Tom. Good morning. Hi. Uh, once again, some traffic problems. I-70 westbound before the north split. The left lane is closed due to an accident. Uh, accident. Uh, northbound Lafayette Road at I-65. A big problem in northbound I-465 at Rockville Road on the west side. A jackknifed truck. This okay. portion of the Bob and Tom Show brought to you this morning by... Dreyer and Reinbold Infinity. Excited to offer the all-new 1996 G20. It's $249 a month. Got your five speeds. That's, uh... Five speeds. That's first. Mm-hmm. Uh, second. Third, fourth, and fifth. Third, fourth. Tom's not biting. Neutral and reverse. So it's <laughs> got... Air six conditioning. Seven. Air conditioning. Sorry. Power. It's Nothing. got seven speeds. Well, Technical. it's six, because neutral, you don't go anywhere. Oh, that's true. Dual airbags, anti-lock brakes, and much more. 573-0222. 573-0222. I-465 in Keystone. Dryer and Reinbold Infinity. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. This is the Bob and Tom program. We're back after speaking with actor Mark Hamill. He's a very personable guy, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Nice guy. Mm -hmm. um, it is now, now time for, uh, for entertainment, entertainment news, news with Christy Lane. We're reasonably on time. Yes, we are. It's amazing, isn't it? Some of the things you can look for in your favorite record stores today. Lou Reed set the Twilight Reeling is out. The best of Quiet Riot. I know Tom's going to run out and buy that. Oh, yeah. And Home what Alive. What would that consist of, exactly? <laughs> it's a single. Two sides. <laughs> come on and feel the noise. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, <laughs> come on. I, I couldn't remember what their hit was. Come on, feel the noise. It's an old Slade hit. Mm -hmm. That was oh, hit by the Eng English band Slade. Yeah. Yep. Wow. And then there's a um, Home Alive, The Art of Self-Defense, which features various artists like Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Nirvana, Presidents of the United States of America. <laughs> I put this CD in my CD player in the car the other day. First song out of the box. Peaches? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it was a song by... I don't even remember the name of the band, but it was pretty much... In, the F word was used quite a bit, if that tells you anything. Oh. <laughs> I kind of went, whoa. Ozzy Osbourne hops on the Information Superhighway Thursday night as his concert at Seattle's uh, Mercer Arena will be broadcast live in real time over the World Wide Web. You'll need to have a certain modem and specific software to access the show. It starts at 9.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, to access the concert and information required to download it, check out Ozzy's homepage, which apparently is located under Sony dot com slash music slash artist info slash Ozzy Osbourne slash menu slash real dot htm. That's a long one. I think Very if you, long. If you just type in Ozzy into the, your one of your search engines. Yeah, I'd probably pull it. it up quicker. Mm -hmm. Collective Soul likes it keeping it intimate despite two platinum plus albums when they start their 96 tour week from tonight in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Nearly all the dates will be in venues with capacities under 2,000. Why? Apparently, singer Ed Roland feels it's where they belong. We're a new band, and we consider the second release our debut record because the first one was a demo. It makes us feel more confident in what we do, and we're still learning. It's fair to the fans that way. It's kind of an interesting answer. A lot better for the fans. Yes, definitely a lot better for the fans. Um, Oasis finds one 
at the British Music Industries Brit Awards. They won three major awards for Best Group, Best Album, and Best Video for Wonderwall. The Manchester Band acknowledged its debut to the Beatles' middle period of Rubber Soul and Revolver, which inspired their layered bluesy sound. Their albums abound in Fab Four references. Wonderwall, for instance, takes its name from an obscure film scored by... George Harrison. Very good. It's also a... Soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was George Harrison's first solo album. Mm -hmm. It's a great song. Michael Jackson appeared relaxed and assured as he sang his um, song for the Ecology Earth song at the Brit Awards in London. A crane swept him over the crowd and Jackson stripped off drab clothing to reveal an all-white outfit. Bob Geldof. Oh, it was just his skin. He was naked. Yeah. <laughs> Bob Geldof presented Jackson with a special artist of a generation honor. It was Michael's first live performance since collapsing on stage in New York last year. This is going to scare you guys to death. I dreamt about Michael Jackson last night. Already. Did you see him on uh, the news last night? Arriving. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like my like my neighbor. And like, you know, somebody like would just come over and hang out and like, you know, just be a friend. It was really weird. You're living in a nice neighborhood if Michael's your neighbor. No joke. I guess. Uh, Rolling Stone reports Aerosmith is in a Miami studio working on its new album. Glenn Ballard, who produced last week's best-selling album Jagged Little Pill for Alanis Morissette, will be the producer, and it may make it out by this summer. Uh, morning, Bob and Tom Show. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. Whoa! Keith Jackson uh, from ABC Sports. Ready? Keith, it's always a pleasure. Uh, what, what can we do for you this morning, sir? Oh. Keith? Well, sorry. So very, very sorry. Well, why are you calling this morning? Well, I just, I just woke up from one of them troubling human dreams. Uh, troubling homo dreams? <laughs> Oh, uh, really? I didn't know you had those. Tell us about your dream, Keith. Tell you what, the scary thing, you know, the last one I had the football season, Mr. Steve Spurrier was walking on me wearing nothing but a pair of flip-flops. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Spurrier walking on your back wearing flip-flops. Oh, my. I tell you what, it almost made Mr. Kid Jackson think twice. He's got a pretty nice ass on him, but you know. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, now I just uh, had a really troubling dream last night. I, uh -huh. Oh, just a troubling hole. I was making out with Mr. Steve Fisher at a Ford Explorer. Ooh, <laughs> oh, that is my. troubling. Wow. Oh, it was a big old ugly now. You uh -huh. know. Well, a little trouble in the homo dream. Rosy cheeks. Mm -hmm. Oh, my mercy. You getting a little horny there, Keith? Oh, tell you what, just kind of working it up. I tell you what, Mr. Oh, tell you what, I just, oh, did you see the models of the David Letterman special last night? Oh, he had the most beautiful women in the world. Bring it out the top ten list. And Mr. Keith Jackson got a big old long horn the size of Texas. You <laughs> <laughs> yes, and did it on Thanks, uh -huh. Keith. All right. David Letterman <laughs> Thank is... You, Keith. Speaking of David Letterman, he's not real happy, of course, about the new HBO movie, The Late Shift, which debuts this weekend. But... He will have, as his guest tonight, John Michael Higgins, who plays David in the actual film. Well, if he's upset about it, why is he promoting it? That's a good point. Good point. Know anybody who reminds you of Beaver Cleaver? Universal Pictures would like to be introduced. The studio has embarked upon a talent search for boys aged 7 to 13 to star in a new movie based on Leave it to Beaver. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie's marriage has lost its sheen. The actor's five-month marriage to model Donna Peel is on the skids. It was announced on Monday. According to Charlie, he said he wasn't ready for commitment and wed the wrong person. The couple met last winter in New York while filming a Parliament Light cigarette commercial for Japan. They got engaged in April, were married on September 3rd or September so That's how we can afford all those hookers. How? How's that? Well, see, big, a lot of stars do this. A lot of uh, very big movie stars will do commercials that in only Japan. air in Japan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Paul Newman, who hadn't done a commercial until he finally did one for American Express, I believe, during the Super Bowl. Paul Newman does commercials all the time in Japan. Mm -hmm. as, big dogs. as do people like Woody, Huge, Woody, no. Woody Allen. Yeah. I think even Barbara Streisand might have done one at some Wouldn't point. be surprised. And you get a little extra cash in the side. Sure. So, you know, Charlie probably, he probably has some little, you know how, do you ever have a thing where you go, you know, I'm going to take all the money I make on the side. And I'm going to put it toward, you know, my mortgage or something. He put it towards See, Char Girl. Charlie probably <laughs> said, I'll tell you what, everything I do for Japan, hookers. That's probably what he did. He said $50,000 he spent on yeah. Heidi Fleiss's call girls. So, you know, it's probably That's just Heidi Fleiss. That's just Heidi Fleiss's, more. yeah. Sure, but I mean, he, uh, I'm sure he gets paid six figures for doing this oh, Japanese sure. cigarette commercial. Right. Mm hmm If not more. So I didn't know they had cigarette commercials still in Japan. I didn't either until I read the story Why in USA they? Today. 
I, because I think I'll have to. I think we're the only country that doesn't promote cigarettes. Oh, and in France, they can't even have the names of the cigarettes on the um, walls at the at the raceway. Oh, that's right. That's right. So they're you know that's right. Mm. Oh, and the Grand Prix. Yeah. yeah, that's mm. right. You know, they only have the colors and yeah. stuff up there. That's and they're right. Trying, they're trying that to make it right. early. Then, uh, morning, Bob and Tom show. Bob and Tom show. Hello. Mark. Martin Sheen. Oh, hey, Charlie's dad. I'm Martin Sheen, uh, distinguished actor. Uh, Martin, how are you? Well, I've handcuffed myself to a Toyota Corolla to protest the treatment of my son in divorce court. Well, your son, is he's not being treated badly. He's just, just getting divorced. Well, he, he basically nailed this broad for five months, and now he wants to get rid of her. And he's going to have to pay some sort of settlement. Uh-huh. I mean, typically your protests are about international uh, problems and uh, sure, you know, you know, freedom, save and the earth, and stuff democracy, like that. and then the environment. This seems to be to be kind of a domestic dispute. I'm not sure it's really worth chaining yourself to a car. You don't agree to you don't agree with me that this is a mistreatment of a human. Mm, uh, no, no I, I I don't agree I don't, with you. I don't actually, know the human rights problem. I don't know the details of their split. So yeah, I don't either. No. Well, maybe maybe there is a. <laughs> yeah, too bad could you could you hang up on Martin? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope someone drives off in the car. <laughs> That'd be very painful. Well, that's really yeah, it news. I guess it would, wouldn't it? Well, thank you very much, sure. Christy. We're going to take a break, and we're going to come back with uh, some sporting news. Uh, oh, I'm, uh, before we do that, we have a special feature. I'm sorry, we. What? It's, it's brief. Now, you said you went to a movie yesterday, Christy? Uh, yes, I went to see a movie called Beautiful Girls, starring Matt Dillon, Timothy Hutton, Loma Thurman, uh, uh, Lauren Holly, Rosie O'Donnell. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Suck. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it wasn't really very good. There, uh, to me, there was really no point. It was like, you saw one of those movies, you're sitting there going, okay, what's the point? You know, Didn't so, like him. Nah, it wasn't, wasn't very good. A lot of beautiful girls in it? <laughs> there were some pretty girls in it, yeah, I guess. Well, this is now, sometimes we don't get to see all the movies. We get awfully busy. Right. And, so um, we have developed something called Cliff Note Theater. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. Where you actually get to... Um, you get the feel of the whole movie, but in just in, a, in a short period of time. Yeah. So that's, that's what this is all about. Uh, hello, and welcome to another edition of Cliff Notes Theater. Today, an extraordinary recreation of Nicolas Cage in one of the most critically acclaimed films of the decade, Leaving Las Vegas. Let's watch. <laughs> Drinking, apparently. Uh-huh. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> Bravo! <laughs> Tune in again next time for Cliff Notes Theater. Dies in the end. A complete uh -huh. cinema experience. You don't just the movie don't have the time to sit through the whole movie. Oh my! <laughs> now we just spoke with Mark Hamill. Don't we have Star Wars Cliff Note Theater somewhere? Ooh, gosh, that goes back. I think wow. we do hiding in the uh, no, archives. That may take wow. a, that, that may take a take while to find. Yeah. Okay, so the all right. We'll take a look. We'll come right back. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Huh? Well, I'll be at Hollywood Barn Filmworks tonight downtown. Join me 6.45 and 7 o'clock, the early movies. American President Chick will be on. Why don't you come down and see a good Maybe film? Maybe I will. Maybe I will. And Sabrina. We're going to have a lot of fun. So join us at Hollywood Barn Filmworks downtown or right across from Union Station. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. Could I? Did you bring <laughs> your gun? Me. Did you bring your gun today? Here, Don't forget our friend Duke Tomato at Slippery Noodle tonight. Go visit the Dukester <laughs> and get into Mardi Gras mood. Mm -hmm. This is the Bob and Tom program. <laughs> I'm going to be on the news. <laughs> We were talking about... I'm uh, going to be on the news. Is that what you said, Bob? Well, that's, that's, because, that's because we're going to shoot chick. chick. We're going to have to kill chick, and that means the, the story. TV cameras will all want to come out here. Nanny, and... boo -boo. Are we in a book? <laughs> um, will it be beneficial? <laughs> the, um, um, mm -hmm. We were talking about baseball. Mm -hmm. And the fact that uh, one of the lead stories today is about baseball uh, allegedly extending the strike zone. Um, talking to the umpires. They're trying to shave some time off the game. Apparently, yeah. all, they're, all they're really doing is uh, making the strike zone where they've been calling strikes for the last ten years. From knees to the letters, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it's really the the real strike zone is from the waist to about the middle of your shin. 
from the waist to the middle of your shin. I and, thought it was always about, in the letters, right about chest high. And, and outside, it, 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 about three inches outside the plate. Mm -hmm. But if you saw this new overhead camera, oh, oh boy, yeah. it's really that revealing. Is it has been telling yeah. you how how much we've always been getting the odd angle anyway, and then you see that it's like oh oh my, and how much <laughs> rep how much reputation yeah. will give you a strike? Mm -hmm. Greg Maddox, everyone considers the best pitcher in the game right now. After seeing the World Series, you see why his strike zone is about five or six inches larger than mm -hmm. everybody else's. This and I'm not I'm not saying anything about his skills. He is smart enough. He is consistent enough that he can put it there every time. Mm -hmm. And by putting it there every time, that's what he's being mm -hmm. rewarded with as far as calls go. Because umpires say, well, he's putting it where he wants to put it. Mm -hmm. well, and then the catcher's not moving his targets, so therefore the umpire gives him that call. That's the biggest selling outside. point, in my opinion, is, a, is the catcher's glove. Mm -hmm. I think that's what sells it more than a ball going Maybe they should player. go with that. If the catcher I'm moves, bigger. it's a ball. <laughs> the catcher does not move, it's a strike. I see. Mm. Mm. Now, they're trying to shorten the game a little bit, and apparently what they did last year shortened the game by about three minutes. Yeah. I'm suggesting this. changed the whole game for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can't see I that. can't watch it the same way. No. It just doesn't have the that's same too fast. That's, romance. That's three, less, that's three less peanuts. Yep. Seventh inning, it's a knee bend instead of a stretch now. <laughs> <laughs> now, we uh, were suggesting perhaps they could shorten the national anthem. Oh, that, that... So... I'm getting to the point where if you can't sing it under a certain amount of time. Well, it's getting longer and longer. NBA games, it's really out of control. Mm -hmm. Well, this all goes back to something that was pointed out by comedian Robert Klein from uh, his uh, great album called Mind Over Matter, which has been re-released on the Rhino label. Rhino. Uh, Rhino is, Sandberg. Uh, <laughs> Robert, <laughs> Robert Klein, Child of the 50s and Mind Over Matter, and um, I think even New Teeth are all available now on CD. This is, uh, you'll recall the first time that the National Anthem got weird was with Jose Feliciano. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And this is something that uh, that Robert points out, I think, and we should share this with you right now. Funny thing happened the other night before the Nick game. The National Anthem record didn't work in Chicago or something. Sent everybody into a panic. What can we do? Can we forfeit the game? What do we do? We can't stop the... They didn't play it. It broke. And the National Anthem, is it 2-0 in the favor of the home team? We can't stop the show. We can't put a game without the National... We have a National Anthem fetish in the United States. When I go to Madison Square Garden to see the Knicks play, I didn't forget what country I'm in. Where are we, Bill? Belgium? Oh, say. Oh, thank you very much. We're in America, I forgot. The fans of the big game are chomping at the bit to get the game over. They're clapping sooner and sooner. And the whole woo -hoo, woo -hoo, of the... They're starting at the beginning. Oh, say... There's a message there somewhere. Come on. It's a four-octave range. Even Metropolitan Opera stars can't cut it. And the rock is <laughs> When have you ever done that song in one octave? Oh, you have to switch gears like a ten-ton Mack truck. It was written for a goose. I don't know who could sing that. Super page of Glenn Campbell. Forgot the lyrics. A gleaming, gle a streaming. <laughs> what is he, from Latvia? I didn't forget the lyrics ever. Some of them are so nervy. Last forever with priests and invocations and rabbis before the game. Come on, it's a football game. Join us now <laughs> in honoring America <laughs> with the longest known version, version <laughs> of the Star Spangled Banner <laughs> with Anita Bryant, Bryant <laughs> the Bible, Bible, oranges, oranges, and the 101st Airborne Division. <laughs> and the players, the amphetamines, are starting to work at this point. <laughs> Come on, they can't stand still. <laughs> they do a nice job of it. You can bet they're told to please stand still. They don't want to. Well, they're monkeying around with it a little. Like, even Glenn Campbell gives it a little twist to the song. It's not a terrific song. <clears throat> the first person to really change it was Jose Feliciano. Remember that? About four years ago, the World Series. Oh, say here, mira, can you see here? <laughs> a little quick change, you know. I I'm, I'm figured he, I, I, he must have figured they wouldn't kick the shit out of him because he was blind. <laughs> Bravest thing I've ever seen. Plus, it was a dynamite song with him. I'm sure it was good for at least a thousand letters. Don't you ever sing the national anthem that way again, you stick bastard. I'll kill you and all of your family. Signed, unsigned. <laughs> Written by the same gentleman who's in charge of the Veterans Committee to bring the disabled veterans through the game, you know. Then he proceeds to stand in front of their wheelchairs for two hours so they can't see the game. You ever see that? And they make them leave early with a 7-7 tie, two minutes to go. 
<laughs> Can we just stay next to me? Look, they're nice enough to let you in for nothing. <laughs> Robert Klein and uh, a classic piece about the national anthem, still true to this day. That's from the uh, the uh, great album by Robert Klein called Mind Over Matter. It does get longer mm. every year, it seems. Yeah. Well, now, oh. But that was just the very beginning. And oh. Up until then, as he pointed out, it was pretty the, much straight. I remember the huge controversy of the and, Jose and Feliciano it, thing. It, you know, it kind of goes in waves, and now, 20 years later, uh, it, you know, it's always oh, yeah. but, oh. one of the players' wives... Has yeah. a singing uh, career on the yeah. side, and oh boy! Well, you're hitting too close to home now. Mm. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, <laughs> as he points out, it's, it's it's a rough song. You know, even the best singers have trouble. It's you know can be really schmaltzy. And mm -hmm. my favorite ones now are the school choirs who do it at this rapid pace because the classes are so short in junior high. That you have to to get in the most they songs. They got to do it up tempo. Gotta, yeah. <laughs> so they come in and they go. Whatever happened to the guy? Can you see? Pipe it on. Who's the guy that did it with the? Who's the guy that did the? Was it the Xerox commercials where the guy talked real fast? Who was Federal Express? Who was that? Federal uh, Express. Uh, Mashida. John. Yeah, John, John Mashida. Mashida. Mm -hmm. John Mashida. I wonder if he's ever done the national anthem as a spoken word piece. Was like anything better than another? Oh, he could probably do it in twenty seconds or something. Sure. That'd shorten the game a little bit. Yeah, it would. Let's bring him into a World Series game. Let's or... see if we can get him maybe by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> NBA yeah, final. I'd imagine he's... Yeah, we'll do it for the, we'll do it for, we'll do it for the of, final floor. A lot of the gigs have uh, slipped right by him lately, haven't they? He hasn't done much. Well, he does, that, uh, he does a Micro Machines commercial on, on kids' well, television with those tiny little... Yeah. Micro Machines. You know, it's funny you mentioned the final floor because they just have a band play it. Play it. Mm -hmm. Now that you mention it, because I don't remember... I've been to the Final Four of the last six years, and they I don't ever remember any big Sing. names singing it or anything. It's probably because they wanted to be over. They wanted to get it done. and Well, this is time for the, some of the bands to shine. And, you know, you know, they've been working all year. And the big drum solo in the middle, yeah. <laughs> hey, by the way, speaking of that, this is kind of serious. You know. <laughs> that was the best cheer, by the way, from the UCLA <laughs> band last year. Uh, the O'Bannon brothers, obviously, the... The, the studs stars. of yeah, the oh, UCLA yeah. team, and their dad was there at the uh, in the CBS area where we were doing the broadcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he showed up, the band started chanting, "Have more kids! <laughs> Have more kids!" Oh, really? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> now, Mark, I know you're kind of a music guy. Mark Patrick's in the studio with us. Uh, can you read that? That's from the paper. It's kind of a serious thing. Ex Iron Butterfly bassist Philip Taylor Kramer is still missing. Exactly one year after he vanished in California. The six foot five computer engineer was driving a green Ford Aerostar van, California license plate, three EBU, O two four. He was a bass player for Iron Butterfly, and I guess they they really need to get him back because the uh, Inagata Davida drum solo is almost over. Look out! <laughs> <laughs> now that he's been gone for a year. Bass <laughs> solo, very bad. <laughs> we're going to take a break. We're going to come back with a special request for this. I've got a. Um, this is. Uh, we're going to come back with a piece. This is my favorite baseball piece of all time. It's from a guy from San Francisco named Dan St. Paul. Oh. It's, it's a work of genius. All right. It's about um, the uh, old Bob, baseball yeah. in the old days, mm -hmm. biblical times. We'll come back with that by special request on this, the Bob and Tom Show. Well, it's Q95. You're with Bob and Tom. This portion of our program is sponsored by Indy Tire, where you get more mileage for your money. You'll find name brand tires like Firestone, General. Okay, yeah, Hoosier. that's two. Good year. Oh, no good year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we were going to get in trouble. <laughs> I knew it. What about, no. what about Kenny's shoes? They got those? Michelin, General, General, Bridgestone, Firestone, and Hoosier. Okay. See, I got three got of them. Some of them. Mm -hmm. Don't take their name for granted. Indy Tire also does service work like alignments, brakes, suspensions, rack and pinions, rear ends creased. That's at Indy Tire. Remember, when you think tires, think Indy Tires. <laughs> <laughs> well, Oops, I don't know if we do front end. <laughs> <laughs> that's Indy Tires. If you'd had better tires, you wouldn't better have Better tires might have stopped in time. Sure, Indy that's tires. That's, Thank that's you. That's what that's all about. <laughs> all right. Okay. Boy, that was a Woo! buckle. Where'd that come from? Good morning. Uh, this is the Bob and Tom program. This portion of our show is the Dick's Pick Show. Uh, 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 
Hooky oh, smooth. Wow. <laughs> this is where we get to kick back and relax. <laughs> Let me remind everybody listening this morning in uh, Evansville that our friend Bert Chalice is going to be starting tonight at the Funny Bone Comedy Club down there. So be sure to go see Bert. Tell him we said hi. Mm-hmm. Uh, great show. Right now, the Dixter joins us in the studio. This is where we get to kind of kick back and uh, let Dick take over. It's all yours, Dick. Go Thanks ahead. a lot. You know, oh. today's phone topic is the most painful sex you've ever had, and <laughs> no, not stop. And <laughs> not stop. Yeah, because, uh, Dick. Before the previous Dick. What? Dick. 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 No, that's not that's our not topic. Today's today. phone. No, See, our previous phone there. topic. Yeah, I used really to... hated this. I always have to step in. Right. Rug burns? and stuff like that. Can you do that? Get your knees on the rug? Can you come up with a topic that we can just... I understand. Right I show? think I have the topic today. What? Hmm. What would that be? It's a variation on yesterday's topic. Sex in the okay. workplace? Yes, but this time I want it from the perspective not of the person involved, but on the person who found has, somebody. Walked has in. come upon Walked someone. In. Wait, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Yeah. No, wait, don't Let me rephrase that. Not come upon someone. Someone who has uh, oh. happened, <laughs> encountered. Happened upon oh. someone. Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a non participant right. say We already had yes. those stories. If this, is, if this is you, We're I've done Starting that. over. <laughs> if I've this done is that. you, <laughs> you've come upon someone sure. and had to apologize. If you were at the work site or whatever and you opened a door and there they were, who has? We'd like to know the details. Well, no. No names, please, you and know, no locations. You know, it's a variation on this, and we shouldn't do it today, but you know it's a lot of fun? Let's just say you're you're at somebody's house, and you're not as familiar with them as perhaps you should have been if you were sober, but, you know, there you are, you know, having a little consensual intercourse, and then all of a sudden you, you realize they have a pet, and uh, that pet is there on the bed with you, and uh, <laughs> this you feel to you. I can an feel extra... Uh, nose? <laughs> nose, Yeah. <laughs> Some place where maybe this it has shouldn't happened be. to you. I, I can tell by the look on your face. <laughs> where was the dog's nose? <laughs> it's happened to you. Uh, let's just. Uh, so let me get this straight. Not in, <laughs> you're giving the missus the high hard one at somebody's no, house. Hello. Huh? Hello. See, the, pardon me. Dog Thank comes you. up. I thought we had a topic. Uh, <laughs> you see, hello? what you do is when you do this, you can confuse. Can we not include animals, please? Oh, okay, righty. So you confuse the listener. But it's You're right. We don't want to confuse the listener. No, Tom has a great point. We, we have one. We want to defer to Tom. We We're have one topic. Okay, it's there you sex are. Sex at the workplace, and have you ever walked in on someone doing it? You're at the public library. You're a librarian. You walk in back to the copy room to make a copy of there somebody's weekly reader article. There they are. And there, and they, there are. they are. There's mm-hmm. Goofus. There's Goofus and, and Mrs. And Mrs. Johnson. Now, see, was Goofus, it Gallant or Gallant? I, well, I always said Gallant. So did I. Really? Okay, how, how about Gallant? Okay, Goofus has sex at the office place. Gallant walks in on it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Gallant, Gallant is studying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gallant is busy doing something worthwhile. Goofus is in the back uh, shagging the librarian. <laughs> Goofus says, bitch, get out. I can't sleep with you here. <laughs> Gallant takes the lady home. Yeah. Goofus goes, get out. Uh-huh. Gallant says, may I drive you home, ma'am? Yeah. Gallant says, was it good for you? Mm-hmm. Goofus, Goofus says, says <laughs> <laughs> there cares? you go. Goofus says, who cares? Mm-hmm. That's right. All right. Like I care. Well, I think we've established <laughs> our, topic. Our, our topic. And maybe Sadly. we should now move on. Was it good for on. you? All right. <laughs> we have people waiting to, to talk. <laughs> Remember, uh, no names and no business names, and, please. Right. And no mothers. Turn down your radios, please. And no moms. No mothers. <laughs> and no specific orifice mentions. Uh, quiet, thank you. Uh, morning, Bob and Tom Show. Who's this? Jane. I'm sorry? Jane. Hi, Jane. How are you? Fine. Hi, okay. Jane. What happened? Um, I work in a big building, and I was working late on the bottom floor. Uh-huh. I had to go get some papers out of my boss's office, and he and his wife happened to be there on top of his desk. Oh, my. And it was kind of funny. And <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing. Did they have to move a leg did while you're they, getting the uh, papers? Did they scramble <laughs> as soon as the door opened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My boss actually fell down on the floor behind his desk. Oh, really? Like, just laid there, and mm-hmm. I turned around and walked out. You should have said, "You should have said, well, I haven't seen you in that position since 2.30. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Yes. Well, what a word. How to oh. lose. How to lose. Now, Dick raises a good point. Did he have to move so you could get those papers you were trying to... <laughs> No, I didn't worry about it. Did you get him the next day? Uh, no, actually, I didn't. Uh, it was on a Friday night, and I spoke to him Monday about it. He apologized to me, and I apologized to him, and no longer do I work there. But <laughs> That's an interesting story. Now, at least, you know, there's a certain romantic element to this. It sure. was the man's wife. Sure. Exactly. Remember the famous, did you ever hear the famous story about the guy? I think he was a cop, a sheriff out at somewhere out west, and he oh, borrowed yeah, yeah. a... Well, I think it was in Kansas. He rented a video player, a video tape camera rather. camera and player from a video store and he and his wife apparently video. filmed themselves mm-hmm. 
flagrant delecto. <laughs> they watched it over the weekend, returned the camera and the equipment to the video store, but forgot to take the tape out. And that could have happened anyway. And that, be, that, be, that became a, a videotape called The Sheriff Rides Again. Yes. And it became a big seller in those parts. And, in fact, it's, it's actually a copy of it showed up here one day. But it's it's one of those things where it was uh, mm -hmm. consensual between the husband and wife, and unfortunately, mm -hmm. somewhat embarrassing. But yes, at least. oh yeah. Okay. Well, thank sure. you for your story. Thank Thanks, you, Jane. Thank you. Mm, bye. Bye. -bye. What's yeah. in our topic? Uh, exploring at the office and opening a door you wish you hadn't opened. Uh, Check this has uh, happened to you, hasn't it? We have another line. Uh, we sure do. Morning, Bob and Tom Show. Who's this? Uh, Steve. Hi, Steve. How are you? Just fine. Great. What happened? Uh, I'm a uh, part-time instructor at a local university, uh -huh. okay. and was having. Uh, getting ready for class on a weekend. Went to my uh, room and found the room uh, door to be shut. And uh, I, it acted like it was locked, so I went ahead and got ready to open it. Opened it up, walked in, and found two students um, right there on the floor. Wow. At least they weren't on your desk. In the classroom. Yeah, good point. <laughs> oh, there goes today's papers. <laughs> this ink, it's smudged. <laughs> what, was your well, class, what was your class in, by the way? Uh, it's a computer class. <laughs> ah, well. Wow, so... Uh, they so they weren't going for extra so credit, she, she was check checking his hard drive. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And he, her floppy disk. <laughs> now, uh, did you, uh, did, did you uh, just shut the door and leave, or did you uh, reprimand the students? Well, when I first walked in, I was kind of stunned. I didn't know uh, exactly what to think. Um, and I had some students who followed me into the room. Oh, oh wow. wow. Uh, they thought the door was locked as well, so they were just standing outside the door. Mm -hmm. And I think these two individuals thought that uh, there wasn't any class there that day, but there was. And we just kind of stood there for a second and uh, uh, proceeded then to leave and then waited outside the door until they finished up what they were doing and walked out. Oh, they finished? Well, that's classic. <laughs> well, that's Let awesome. them finish. I now think that's nice. That's a kid who's got gumption. Yeah. <laughs> now, you, other things, he's a go-getter. That guy's got an attention span that we can all be proud of. <laughs> no, I'm saying, this, he will. He will succeed in the yes. workplace. Yes. Mm. All right. How much RAM was he using? <laughs> <laughs> a lot when he walked in. Uh, well. Oh, thanks a lot. Wow. Or was he taking a mega Megabyte at the time. Uh, well, see, I think already the topic's way out of control. I think you're. I right. like it though. Let's keep moving. I like okay. it when it's out Shall of control. Shall we move on? Sure. Okay, fine. All right. Uh, morning, Bob and Tom. Show. Who's this? Hello. Bill. I'm sorry. What's your name? Bill. Hi, Bill. Okay, Bill. Um, I work for a uh, local municipality. Okay. <laughs> okay. We can. We can. Gotcha. That could be anywhere. We're on a bunch of different keep cities. Going. Right. Anywhere at all. I'm say which department? No. 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 no please don't. We had a, uh, some kids who worked for us as part of a summer youth program to help kids get jobs who otherwise couldn't get jobs. Uh -oh. Right. Wasn't that nice? And how'd, they, how'd they, they couldn't how, get jobs, but they were horny. How, how'd they do, by the way? Were they pretty good workers? Uh, it, it varies. What uh -huh. sort of job is he well, referring you to? <laughs> well, keep going, Bill. They, uh, the nature of the job. We had one boy who was probably, well, he, let's say they were around high school age. Okay. And it was his first day on the job, and his girlfriend had been following him from job to job on her bicycle. And uh, oh my. I came upon him. I came upon the bicycle parked next to a building, and I didn't see him or her anywhere. Mm -hmm. They were in. Uh, what was he supposed to be doing at this painting. point? Painting. 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 I and uh, I had a female employee, employee with me. And when we went around to the back of the building, there was another kid who was like uh, looking out for the boss. <laughs> the oh, they were painting, all right. No, they weren't painting. And <laughs> when we opened the garage door. Mm. There they were. A little whitewash. <laughs> it, it was really embarrassing. I'll bet it was. Did he finish or did he... Uh... <laughs> he finished the day and then... Uh, oh, he oh. finished the day. Well, the yeah. day. We had a long talk with him at the end of the day and he thought we were being unfair when we just uh, told him maybe he would look for work elsewhere. Whoa. Wow. Well, of course. You weren't you know, sued, were you? That's pr that's No. That's pretty brave to actually... On your first day. So I assume if he was painting... <laughs> wow, I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm just going to take a guess. I assume he was using a latex paint. <laughs> Possibly. Just you normally, uh, you you normally wait three or four years into the job before you <laughs> thanks, try something. Thanks for calling. Wow. Thank you, sir. Wow. You know, I'm remembering I did this to someone that I worked with in West Virginia. I actually set him up. You set them up? He brought his girlfriend into the radio station I was working, and it was like 5.30 or quarter to 6 in the evening, and he wanted to know where the general manager was, and... Uh, 
I said, I, I haven't seen him for a while. And we were in the process of moving out of the station, so the, all the rooms were abandoned. So he took his girlfriend into the, one of the empty offices in the back. And the general manager. And I knew the general manager was coming back with a prospective buyer for the building. Oh, chick! And he came back and he just started, you know, touring the office and opening the door. Chick, have you ever thought why people hate you? Have you kind of, <laughs> let me think, have you analyzed that or really thought it over? Let's move on, shall we? The guy, they, the guy uh, didn't get fired, the way, Do they come with the building or just in it? <laughs> wow, the there's live entertainment. Hello. <laughs> morning, <laughs> morning, Bob and Tom Show. Who's this? Uh, Tony. Hi, Tony. Tony, not his real name. Of Tony. not. Tony. Uh, what happened, Tony? Um, when I was in college, I was interning at a radio station. Uh-huh. Um, yes. I think, Dick, you'll like this. Um, I'm going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Uh, it was Saturday night about probably 1.30 in the morning, and I happened to be driving back from a party and was in the vicinity of the station, so I turned it on just to listen, see what was going on. And uh, suddenly over the middle of a song, a commercial began to play. Uh-huh. So I turned around and ran back into the station and sort of came up the back stairs and let myself in and was going to run in and tell the uh, assistant program director that he'd made a mistake and that something was playing over the uh, song. And as I came around the corner and looked into the booth, um, I, I figured that it was either like her arm or his elbow or something had <laughs> potted up the commercial and started playing it, but they didn't care. No, of course oh, not. No, no. Um, this, and this was the assistant PD there. Uh -huh. um, not only did I get a stellar recommendation from him when I left. <laughs> sure. sure. Yeah. I'm sorry, what else? I got a better shift the next week. I got sure. a much better time slot. All of a sudden, you were playing golf with your buddies instead That's of being right. up all night. Yeah, I'm getting paid double time. and <laughs> Look out. Uh, I will say it was not in the Indianapolis area, so it wasn't you, Dick. But. Uh, wow. <laughs> well, we're all shocked. Uh, yeah, it's funny that something like that could actually happen at a well, radio station. Oh, you bet. We've never known sexuality uh -huh. to occur at a radio station <laughs> How odd. And I, I think, Dick, you'd also appreciate this. I think he actually um, was introduced to her via her calling the station that evening. Oh, And, and yeah. once again, we've never, never happened. We never heard of that either. Oh, so it would be dang on. Oh, so it was the farm show. <laughs> oh. Well, thank you, sir. Thanks and a lot. See you guys. Bye. Wow, that's, uh, Tony. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize. but I, I have a story that's, that's, that's not as um, saucy, as sexy as that, but it's, it's, it's in a way uh, funny. When Bob and I were up in Michigan, uh, I was in charge of the station mm -hmm. to some degree. Shocking, isn't it? Um, well, <laughs> now, Tom, this is the part of the story that I'm not believing, but uh, go yeah, on. Keep going. <laughs> One, we, we hired a guy, a real nice guy. Um, I, the guy had a problem bathing, as I recall. He, uh, kind of a that he didn't, didn't bathe much. But uh, One night, uh, we got home, and it was about 3 in the morning, and popped the radio on. And this was in the days prior to the use of uh, of, of compact discs on right. the air. Sure. So we were using traditional turntables. And as you recall, when you got to the end of a record, it would go... Th 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 mm -hmm. You can tell, right? It that was touching the label, right? As it would go around. And we turned the radio, and we all we heard was... Th 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 so we didn't know what to do. So we called the police, because the radio station was uh, <laughs> all the way across the bay. We called the law. No, well, that's a good idea. We were friends. Well, it was a, a we, good twenty-minute drive. We so thought really. that uh, oh, it was good, at least a half an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a chance something bad could have happened. We thought, yeah, sure. sure, perhaps someone had been hurt or robbed or whatever. And uh, the police got there, and uh, this guy was sound asleep. <laughs> wow, <laughs> sound asleep, <laughs> sound asleep. Yep, just sitting there. Just forgot he was there. <laughs> No sex snort, involved, just snoring right away. Yeah, we've some good radio people. stories. Now, you know what one of my favorite radio station stories is? <laughs> I'm afraid to ask. Well, it's our... Careful. I, I, it's our good little friend that we all know. We used to work overnights here. Mm -hmm. And he was a character anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, most radio stations are locked. And typically, there's one of two ways. Either there's an access provided via a key... Or in general, someone's always at a radio station, so there's always someone to quote unquote let, let you, you in. in. Mm -hmm. In this particular instance, he was the only one in the building. Happened to he for whatever reason he wanted to go outside on the oh, loading dock. No, <laughs> locked himself. He, well, up. he put like a rock in front of the door or something, and somehow the rock slipped or the wind caught it. Or this guy was such a character, God only knows what happened. But mm -hmm. of course, the door clicks behind him. Of course. Now, he's figuring, okay, that was in the days we were still playing albums, so... Let it track. He goes, <laughs> we can let it track. That's not a super emergency. He figured, well, he, he was playing a song about midpoint of the album. He goes, I f he figured I have about 15 minutes to determine which is the least window to break. <laughs> and was, like, running around the building going, should I break this window? Should I break that window? Should I... And then, you know, then it's a tough deal because not only do you have to break the window, then you have to go in over the 
the broken glass, the broken yeah. glass and stuff, and then and then figure out how to turn the alarm off. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of problems. So, so we're, we're getting away from our. Subject. That was not I'm a sorry. good. That was not a good night for. Let's uh, <laughs> let's let's move on to this one. Morning, Bob and Tom show. Who's this? This is Dave. Hi, Dave. How are you guys this morning? Good. What happened? Good. Good show. This is great. I have a, a customer down in uh, down in southern Indiana, small town, but it, it's a it's a pretty big manufacturing facility. They maybe have. Oh, two or three hundred guys that work out in out in their shop, and uh-huh. they got a new. This happened about a year ago. They got uh, they got a new plant manager. Hired a guy from Chicago or Detroit to, to come down there and, and be the plant manager. And and anyway, he'd been there for a while and had four or five guys from the shop were uh, were hurt. And in order to uh, find something for him to do, he uh, he didn't want him to just to just go home sick and stuff. He he said, "Come in the next morning," and he said, "I've got." He said, you guys come in about 7. He said, I've got a safety, some safety videos I want you to look at. And he said, when I get there at about 8, he said, we'll, we'll talk about how we're going to handle guys being hurt. So these guys get there about 7 and, and pop the old, uh, and it says right on there, like, uh, you know, OSHA safety, blah, 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 tape right on it. <laughs> it's got a real official-looking tape. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they pop it in there, and uh, they're watching it, and, and it's, you know, it gets to be like 7.30 and quarter of 8, and, and all of a sudden it, it changes to this, this home video of him, and he's laying back on, on like, a bed someplace doing the old five-knuckle shuffle. Uh, he taped himself doing the practice? It, 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 it's, he's just laying back there. He's solo. Okay. <laughs> wow. This time, ladies in the office, and, I mean, they're all... Yeah. It. Ladies watching and, it. And then this guy walks in at like five till eight. Uh-huh. And uh first he tries to play it off as to well, he hadn't ever lived in a small town before and uh it was a big change in lifestyle for him and all this kind of stuff. And I guess he had he had like five or six different meetings with, with group leaders and stuff out in the shop and, and by about two o'clock he had his stuff packed up and he was he was out the door. <laughs> wow. That's really unbelievable. I'll have to try that. <laughs> That would be what, mortifying. What enjoyment would that? I, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. Now, if he had that. pulled a muscle in his hand, would he have gotten a workman's comp? <laughs> Did he file a grievance with the union yeah. on how he was showing what now not to hurt yourself yeah. while doing it? Was watching himself. Yeah. Amazing. It Thanks. Wild. That's yeah, really bizarre. Apparently, you should always wear eye protection. I, I think you should. I think especially you should. if you're laying on your back. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. We have to. That was an OSHA approved. <laughs> I didn't know that. We I must not know that. All right. Uh, wow. You know the Dick's Pick Show. How would you even? Come back from that because it's one thing if you're with some voluptuous individual. Yeah, but when you're a loser by yourself. Yeah. Sorry, you're laying there. Then you want to go back. Then you want to go back. You met that in a night. Nice way. Then you want to go back and watch it. Well, did you see my technique? I mean, mean, the only way you can learn is to watch. You know, I mean, uh, you know, great batters study their stance. And see, chick, isn't that something that you can pretty much self-diagnose without the use of video? I would think. Well, this is sponsored. Yes, it is. Brought to you by. Maybe that would help. The technology user, right? (laughs) Darn right. Speaking of good strokes. Hey, go to Pro Golf. Ho! Uh Ho! If you're headed out of town for a little golf vacation, go to Pro Golf. They've got golf travel bag balls and all the accessories. You know, when you're on one of those long road trips, they even have a little device that you put into your cigarette lighter. But that's all other story. <laughs> Look for Pro Golf in Castleton. <laughs> also on East Washington, Pike Plaza Road, College Park, and in Greenwood. For equipment, apparel, and accessories, nobody beats Pro Golf. <laughs> Ask okay. for the nipple clamp. Oh. They've got it. Nobody beats Pro Golf. Nobody. Nobody. Well, thank you, Dick, and we'll continue this topic tomorrow, obviously. That is kind of cool, though. You're right. I mean, stuff where you come in and and the video thing, you've got to admit, there would be nothing more mortifying than leaving the tape because I've always maintained that, see, you do things. Why would the guy even make it? That's my problem. Well, that that is problematic. But I've always maintained that when you're in. Are there any tapes of the Dick's turning out there? No, actually, there's not, and you would think. No, come on. I was never going to the video. You've never videotaped yourself doing it. Never. Never. I would think with your, I would think with your wild obsession. <laughs> okay. On that note, we must go. This is the Bob and Tom Show. Don't touch that dial. Bob and Tom will be right back to kick off the morning.